Hello, joining me today is highly respected investor Bill Ackman from Pershing Square Holdings. Now, his portfolio is heavily exposed to US consumer through names such as uh, Burger King owner, restaurant brands, Chipotle and Lowe's. So, Bill, are you worried about a potential recession hurting the US consumer, um, consumers starting to spend less, and of course this would feed through to lower earnings for some of these companies in your portfolio? I, I would say the following. Um, you know, the, where we are in the restaurant space is, is kind of the highest value per dollar, right? Chipotle is an incredible meal at a very low cost for a family. And in a recessionary environment, you know, historically people don't stop eating out, but they might adjust from the sit-down restaurant, uh, you know, with menus and a waitress, uh, to a, a you know a fast food uh, environment or a place where they go pick up their own food at the counter. And you know, the, actually, the the fast food, if you will, the quick service restaurants have generally done well in recessionary environments. And I think the the overarching point that it, it, you know the a res the value of a business, unless it's a highly levered uh, very economically sensitive company is not particularly affected by the on, you know, uh, by the event of a recession, right? If you own a, the value of a stock, right, the value of an interest in a company is the present value of the cash that business generates over its life. And if it's a business that should exist forever, well, pick Hilton for example, um, they, we can expect that over, you know, over, in, in past history, there's been a recession every seven or eight years. Let's assume the future is the same, and there's a recession every seven or eight years going forward. It doesn't. That's kind of factored into the value of the of the enterprise. The only reason why a recession creates, it destroys value, is if you have a company that is highly levered, and then if revenues decline, you know their cash flow goes negative, and they can't they can't support their debt, and they go bankrupt, right? But if you own a very well capitalized business, I, I don't think a recession has a meaningful impact. It might affect that year's revenues and cash flow, but that's just one line item in a, a long spreadsheet of cash flows that you discount, if you will, into the present. But the businesses we own, Universal Music being the largest one, uh, and a good example, you know, people are not going to, we think, cancel their Apple Music subscription because we're in a recession. It's the cheapest form of entertainment. It's, you know, 10 cent an hour or something like this. Uh, compare that to a movie or a, a video game, you pay a lot more. I mean, you, you sold stake in Netflix this year after owning only it for three months. You sold your stake in Domino's, you only bought that last year. Mm -hmm. uh, aren't you a believer in long-term investment? You know, particularly with Netflix, obviously share price is up quite a bit since you sold it. So. Yes, so we, are, we look for businesses we can own, so to speak, forever. Our mm -hmm. favorite holding period is something that we never need to sell. Universal Music, I hope, is something we'll never need to sell. But we always reserve the right that if new information comes to light that causes us to reassess our original thinking uh, you know, we're prepared to exit, and, and Netflix is really the traditional example of that. I mean, a business, uh, what attracted us, stock was down from the, you know, middle 700s to, you know, high 300s on a subscriber miss that the company attributed to, you know, COVID, difficulty predicting kind of the COVID, uh, you know, Netflix was a huge beneficiary during COVID, and the thought was, you know, they got a little bit off trend. Um, three months later, they came back and said, well, we're not sure it's actually COVID. We think that the we have a much larger number of un unpaying, i.e. people who share passwords than we thought, or than we've at least disclosed previously. Uh, this is causing us to reassess our business model. We're gonna to go to you know, an advertising model. Um, and while we have enormous confidence in a management team that's done a fantastic job over many, many years, uh, it's a completely new approach to their business. And I think it, it, for us, it made the future difficult to predict in terms of the future, you know, what, what's going to happen. And we own, <clears throat> we're a very concentrated investor. We put a large amount of capital in each commitment. We want these to be things that we can predict with a high degree of confidence over a long period of time. And Netflix became, if you will, unpredictable for us. So we sold it. And we sold it around $225 a share. No, $275 a share. Um, and uh, actually, I don't remember a precise exit price. Uh, it's trading above the price we exited, but that doesn't mean it, w it wasn't the right decision to exit for us. Mm -hmm. An investor who owns 100 stocks is a place for Netflix. An investor who owns 9 or 10, in light of the uncertainty created by the changes in how they're going to approach their market, we felt it was not something that could fit into our portfolio. In general, we like to own things for the long term. On Domino's, we actually made a profitable investment over the course of the year. Our original holding period intention was not a year. But the world changed in a pretty dramatic way. Uh, one, it got a lot more difficult to get labor. 
a lot more difficult to find drivers, a uh, much higher interest rate uh, environment. And the combination of those factors and the valuation that when we sold made it, in our view, uh, just a less attractive opportunity. We'd rather deploy the cash elsewhere. I mean, obviously the market has thrown up some big opportunities this year. Have you, have you sort of been buying anything new recently? So actually the biggest, so we put our capital in two places. One, we launched uh, one of the more aggressive buyback programs out there. Uh, we're buying in about a million and a half shares, uh, you know, approaching about three quarters of a percent of our shares outstanding every month. That's a pretty aggressive program. It's about 28% of the average shares outstanding. We think that's the easiest investment that we can make right now. One, we're well capitalized, uh, you know, plenty of cash on hand. Uh, two, we're trading at, a, as you know, a 35% discount to NEV. Uh, three, our companies are trading at, in our view, deep discounts to their intrinsic values. You get the benefit of that double discount. Uh, so we think that's been a good place. Uh, to deploy capital. The other place we've been deploying capital is some of these sort of more opportunistic hedges. We're investing a relatively small, you know, maybe one, two, two and a half percent of our capital in each of these various commitments together comprising at cost, you know, five or six percent of our capital, but investments where we can make 6x, 8x, 10x, and sometimes more, that seems a better use of capital for our marginal dollar than the next big equity commitment. Uh, and we've looked at, and a couple of things have come closer to prices where we would own them, um, but stocks haven't really gotten cheap enough for us to take our last dollar and buy the next big commitment. So I know that you like to take large stakes in companies, but not controlling stakes, but uh, of your existing holdings then, is it in terms of which ones you'd buy more of? Um, is there any sort of them that they're approaching a level which actually don't want to increase? No. I mean, I think we'd buy more of anything we own at the current price, with the only caveat being it, uh, how large a percentage of the portfolio any individual position might be. So the only position we're trying to increase as we speak, I have to be cautious in how I speak about it because we have an ongoing tender offer, but Howard Hughes stock, um, it was one of our smaller positions down at 1.40 plus percent for the year. And we've made an offer to the other shareholders to buy an incremental 13% of the company. And we'll find out in the next uh, couple of weeks what percentage we get. But that's the only thing that we're buying right now. Mm. Although, in effect, when we buy back shares, we're buying a proportional interest, obviously, in everything else.